Most people don't quit coding because it's too hard. They quit because they tend to keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And so in this video, I wanna break down five mistakes that almost caused me to give up learning to code. And I wanna tell you these mistakes with the hope of you avoiding them and just stop you from kind of spinning your wheels for months and months and months and not making any progress. The first mistake that I had and maybe you know you've experienced this as well is this is such a broad and deep subject matter learning to program you are going to feel like you need to learn so many things all at once don't get me wrong there is a lot of things that you have to learn but the mistake that you can make at the beginning is to try and learn so many things at the same time and that is really going to overwhelm you it's definitely overwhelmed me when I first started to learn to code. And this is where it gets complicated, right? Because obviously to work in tech, you need to learn the basics, but then you need to learn so much more than the basics, right? You need to build on what you've learned, learning how to use different frameworks, learning how to use different libraries. There's a lot that you have to get a grasp of, you know, how to use not only front-end technologies, but how to use back-end technologies as well. It can all be pretty overwhelming. It can all be pretty overwhelming at the start. What you need at the beginning, especially if you know where you're going, right? If you want to go into AI machine learning, you probably need to learn other things. But let's talk about web development specifically. If you want to learn web development, you're going to need to understand HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And here's the thing, you kind of have to just stick with it for a while and it's going to get boring at times. You're going to feel like you're not sort of progressing closer towards that tech job because you're learning these kind of basic programming language, HTML, CSS, JavaScript for so long, it feels like you're kind of, you know, not getting anywhere. But if you're in this phase of learning these programming languages, jumping to another one that is outside the direction that you wanna take, let's say for example, you're going into web development, that's outside of web development, like if you start learning, I don't know, Python, then you are now creating a whole other level of complication for yourself. Instead of just being very focused on what you need to learn to get you to you know, a specific job, you're now adding all this extra stuff that is just going to completely overwhelm you. And without a doubt, you're gonna quit, then you're gonna come back to it, and then you're gonna hear about all these other things that you need to learn. You're gonna quit again. You're gonna come back to it. You're gonna hear about all these other things you need to learn. You're gonna think you need to learn that and you're gonna quit again. And so you keep moving away from the stuff that you actually have to learn at the beginning and stick with it. And so you don't make any progress. And this I think is a huge mistake that people make because you are robbing yourself of really starting to master anything because when you stay with something for long enough, let's say JavaScript, right? Let's If you stay with JavaScript for long enough, other things get easier. And if you stay with Python for long enough, for example, other, other programming languages get easier. For the most part, a lot of these programming languages are pretty similar. If you learn one, you kind of know how to use others. So with all that said, just stick to one programming language and just stay with it. Another big mistake that I made was that I wasn't jumping into projects quick enough. And this is where a crux of the learning happens for you. When you actually figure out that you want to build something and then you you go out and you try to figure out how to build it. There is so much more that you learn through this process. And I can't tell you just how much my learning has leveled up from simply building things on my own. And when I say on my own, I really mean on your own. Pick a project and don't like, not, not a tutorial and just go through it. Yes, it's important to do that at the beginning, but find something that you want to build. You know, I've got a video on my channel as well where I talk about ideas that you can use for projects. Find something that you want to build and just figure out how to build it. And you can do it with AI as well. Just figure out how to build it with AI too, because that's also a huge help. It, it speeds up the learning process because you can ask it a lot of questions as you're building the project. So get into building something right away. Start your big project after a couple of months that you've been learning the basics and so that you just got something to chip away at. I've been working at my capstone project for over two months now. I've learned a lot by building this project myself and it's, it's fun for me to just sit down, put the headphones on, put some lo-fi music on, whatever it is, and just code away, just build this thing that I wanna to bring to life. And it's, it's, it's really fun when you get into the groove, when you get into a flow and it's yours. There's just this special connection that you have with your own project that you're never gonna have with building anything else that you see on a tutorial or that somebody else has built. So this thing is yours. You take pride in it, you wanna show it off. So start building something. If you're a couple months in and you've got the basics down, 
just start chipping away at your own project. I can't tell you how much more motivated you are to sit down and learn. And it's just so easy to code when you're, when you're building something that you actually want. Another huge mistake that I noticed when I started was that the frustration can be very crippling and it can really hinder you from moving forward. There are times that you kind of just need to remind yourself why you're doing this. There's going to be several times that you're going to question if you, if this is actually something that you're cut out for. That frustration is a real thing. I know that I've, I've spoken about this before in, in other videos, but it can be very crippling and it can really stop people from learning to code. It plays on your mind, especially if you've got a bit of self-doubt coming into it, it plays on your mind and it can really affect how you approach it. How do you overcome this frustration? There are several things that you can do in terms of like an immediate way, go for a walk, get away from the computer, go talk to somebody else, make a phone call to a friend or, or a family member, just distract your mind for a little bit. Stop working on what you're working for a while, just put it away and try to work on something else. You know, honestly, I've got a few projects that are sitting in my GitHub account that I had all this like gusto and motivation to start working on. I started working on it and it just, it was just too frustrating to, to get through. So I just stopped it. I am going to go back to them at some stage, but I'm just really enjoying what I'm building right now. So maybe I'll get back to it. Maybe I won't. Who knows? That is a way to, to deal with it. Just put the project away and start something else. Another way to deal with the frustration is go back to the basics, go back to learning the fundamentals again. Sometimes you haven't picked up crucial information through that learning process. And it means that, you know, you got to go back and revisit certain lessons, certain subject matters, certain sections of a course or whatever you're working on. That could be a huge reason why you're having the, those frustrations. The thing that you have to understand about programming is that the frustration from what I'm finding out is just part of the job. Like it's just part of it. And you have to figure out your particular tools or your particular mechanisms of how you deal with frustration. Like how you, when you approach a problem, what's your process? Like, is it something that you're just gonna get bothered with right away? Or do you have the patience to kind of stick through it? Or do you have a ways of decompressing, getting away from it for a while and then coming back to it? The frustration is something that is real and it can, it can cause a lot of people to quit. It, honestly, you know, I'm talking from experience. I've wanted to quit because I'm just so frustrated with how things work. You just question everything. So find ways of dealing with the frustration because I find that to be a huge reason why people quit at the beginning. And it definitely was a reason why I wanted to quit at the beginning of learning to code. The fourth one I wanna talk about is don't treat learning to code like it's school. You need to treat it like it's a craft. You need to treat it like it's practice. It's not like when you used to sit in class and your teacher was writing things on the board and you know you were just trying to memorize it for the test. You went to the exam, you memorized the exam, you got through it and then you came out the next day, someone asked you a question about what was on the test or what was on the exam. You're like, I don't know, I just forgot all about it. I just memorized it for the test and now I've just forgotten it all. That is not a way to approach learning to code. Learning to code needs to just honestly in like the corniest and cheesiest way it needs to become a part of you. It needs to become how you start thinking about problems. It needs to be how you start thinking about work, how you start thinking about programming. You need to kind of let it seep into you and become a part of you. And that's why I talk about learning to code being like practice because when you learn an instrument or when you're learning a new skill or whatever it is, when you're learning to, I don't know, to sing, when you're learning to, to cook, when you're getting better at a video game, you're doing it in a way that you're improving your skills and you are practicing that skill all the time. And that is the same approach that you have to have when you learn to code. You can't just try to check boxes off like, okay, I finished this course. I've got this certification. I finished this course. I got this certification. You need to approach it in a way that you have interest in it and that you are interested to practice. And honestly, I'm saying this because this might be one of the big reasons why you should quit. If this is not a process that you're happy with coming to terms with, that it, that it needs to be practice and that you're learning to code because you just think you just gotta complete as many courses or as, or as many certificates as possible. Maybe, just maybe, and I haven't said this before, maybe it's not the right thing for you because it's a skill like any other skill and you have to as you know <laughs> as ridiculous as this sounds you have to enjoy the process of going through it not i mean when i say enjoy the process i'm not i'm not saying you're kind of sitting there and you're like smiling from ear to ear every single time you sit down to learn to code that's just not how it happens not how it happens with me anyway you know but you have a sense that this is the necessary steps that you need to take to get better at it. And you're not doing it in a way that you would study for a test or exam at school, just for the pure 
results of you know getting an A and then shutting down the textbook and then walking away from it. No, you are doing it because you want this lifelong skill. You wanna get better at it and you understand that the process to get better at it requires a lot of practice. Instead of treating it like you have to get the best grade at school, treat it like how you would treat any skill that you're trying to get better at. And the last one that I wanna mention, and I probably should say that this obviously is not a blanket for every single mistake. There are many other mistakes that I could probably talk about, but I, you know, I just, these are the ones that are coming to mind right now. And that is that consistency and getting better at it doesn't mean every day. Like I know that I've kind of hopped on about how I code every day, but this just doesn't suit everyone and it doesn't suit everyone's learning style. So consistency doesn't mean every single day. You don't have to guilt trip yourself for missing a day or a week and just, you know, give up. Consistency is more about learning how to restart your learning process than quitting it altogether. Taking breaks is actually a really good thing. Now, you can't take a break. <laughs> for like three months and come back to it. You gotta be reasonable about this. Like I said, a, a couple of days, like even a week, if you take a week off, that's fine. Don't put all this unnecessary pressure on yourself to try and like code every single day. Obviously that's extremely helpful. You're gonna get a lot quicker. You're gonna get to where you need to get to a lot faster. But if it's just not possible for you some days, don't put too much pressure on yourself and don't let that be the reason why you don't come back to it the next day or, or the next couple of days. Don't let that throw you off because if you have like been very consistent for a couple of weeks and then one day you're not able to do it, that one day then becomes two days and becomes three days and becomes a month and a three months and next minute, you know, you've completely given up on it. Try to keep tabs on how long of a gap you are taking, but don't put all this ridiculous pressure on yourself that it needs to be a daily thing. It needs to be something that you're grinding out every single day because you're not gonna have any fun with it for a while if you keep doing that. And it's just, that's, you know, that's kind of just a recipe for, for stopping. And it's just unnecessary for you to expect that you're gonna go from no coding whatsoever to then like coding every single day for the rest of your life. It's just completely unreasonable to put that level of pressure on yourself. So when you're just starting out, do as much as you can. And that's why I've mentioned before, if it's only like five minutes for the day, then that, that, that's it. It's just the five minutes for the day. Yes, people are in the comment section are always saying that you're never gonna get anywhere with it, but I don't think that that's the way to think about it. You have to think about it in terms of building this new habit. And that only happens over long periods of time, right? Building a new habit only happens over long periods of time. You're not gonna do it in a week. And you're going to do it in a month. So taking breaks is actually a really good thing. I recommend it. I put a lot of pressure on myself when I first started and I was like, I need to, I need to do this every single day. I need to log a commit every single day. And yeah, look, I've been pretty good at it. There's been some days I haven't. There's been some days that I haven't even been in front of my computer. So don't Put this ridiculous level of pressure on yourself a lot of you guys follow me you're in your like late 20s 30s as well you got families you got kids like don't take away important time away from your families just because you like have to get in three hours of coding today like do a little bit go back to your commitments and then come back the next day so we're looking at the long term here we're looking at long-term horizon long-term gains nothing great happened over a week nothing great happened over a month it's just the dedication over long periods of time. So don't put a ridiculous amount of pressure on yourself to try and get things done. It's just unnecessary. Well, that's it. Uh, five mistakes that you should try and avoid to stay on track. Not so, I don't know, they weren't so kind of tech driven. I think they were more based around kind of mindset and lifestyle. I think those are some of the most important things. And I think that's what, you know, doesn't get addressed enough because those are the things that can really, can really stop us. So hopefully that was really helpful. If you want some more tips from me, you know, to help you to, to learn to code faster, I've got my free newsletter. So go and check that out. It's in the description below. I might chuck it in the comment section as well. Uh, I love hearing from you guys. So yeah, if you disagree with any of the points, let me know if you agree with them. I uh, would love to, to hear your point of view on them as well. But yeah, keep going, keep grinding, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.